In the last video, we discussed analog input on the Arduino. I'm now going to talk about analog output on the Arduino and how it can be useful and why we might want it. So our very first assignment was to use an LED to blink on and off. And so we have to write that LED a digital high and then a digital low to turn it off. So it's on, off, on, off. And there's a delay in between. So I turn it on here, wait a certain period of time, turn it off, wait a certain period of time, turn it on, and so forth. So that works pretty well for most things. However, what if I wanted to have a heartbeat LED? And you may be familiar with seeing this. Uh, this is an example of just a video I found online, how the LED fades in and out. You might have seen this on laptops when their power button glows and uh, basically gives you this kind of heartbeat look. Well, an LED can either be on or off. You can't turn it on partially to get it to glow dim. What you have to do is called pulse width modulation. And what we do is actually we turn it on and off at a certain frequency faster than your eye can see. And we try to make it such that the percentage of time that it's on versus the percentage of time that it's off gives us the approximate brightness that it's going to have on its output. And if we do this fast enough, we can actually trick our eyes. So from this point to this point, this is a full cycle of this uh, signal that we're sending. And maybe we're going to change this a uh, hundred times a second. Your eye can't perceive that. Um, so you're not going to see it as flashing. Your eye just blurs it all together. And it makes it look about 50% as bright. So we call this the duty cycle. So the duty cycle here is 50% because it's on 50% of the time. And so our LED will be approximately 50% as bright. Now if we wanted to dim the LED even more so, what we would do is, um, let's turn this one, uh, I could take my 0 to 5 volts and my output can be, um, maybe if I want to dim it to approximately 10%. So for 10% of the time, of this repeating signal. It's on and 90% of the time it's off. So if I were to again look at this duty cycle, this is approximately a 10% duty cycle and that will give me approximately a 10% brightness on my LED. So if we want to have this heartbeat, what we do is we slowly increase the amount of time that it's on until it gets to maximum brightness, and then we slowly decrease the amount of time that it's on. And we'll do that over and over again. And again, this cycle happens probably a hundred times a second, something faster than your eyeball will ever see. So uh, how do we do that on the Arduino? Well, if you noticed, there were certain pins on the Arduino that have this symbol uh, next to them. So like pin 9 has this little squiggly symbol or um, pin 11 has got a little squiggly symbol. And this is on your digital I.O. So this will be on the right hand side of the board. These are what's called analog outputs. And the way we use an analog output is it automatically sets up some value of uh, the cycle automatically and you just have to say analog write and tell it your duty cycle as a number between 0 and 255. Again, this is due to the way that the Arduino is set up internally. It can only have 0 to 255 steps for an analog output. 
and we're going to treat this as 0 to 100 percent duty cycle. So all we have to do is take a ratio. So if I say I want 50 percent duty cycle, then I say 255 times 50 percent, and that's approximately 127. So this approximately 127 is, is what I'm going to put in to get 50% duty cycle. So I say analog right. I'm going to tell the pin number, so maybe pin 9, and then I'm going to tell the value 127. And my LED is going to be flashing again so fast I won't be able to see it at approximately, with this number, 50% uh, duty cycle. So my LED is going to look dimmer than if I just gave it a digital high um, like our regular blink project was. So um, we can use this for a single LED or much cooler is to use this for an RGB LED. And an RGB LED is very interesting because it's three LEDs in one. So while a normal LED just has one side that's longer than the other here, so you can see where it's the positive and negative. We've got a ground pin, and we have our power pin that will go to your Arduino. And this might be yellow, for instance. Um, the RGB LED is kind of a white color. It's a little bit bigger. doesn't have to be, but in our case it is. And you have three pins that are going to be connected to three different LEDs inside and they all share the same ground. So we'll have, and this isn't the exact pinout of your particular RGB LED, but we'll have something like this. So this might be red. Green and blue LEDs. And what's really cool about this is that you can give each one of these an analog output value somewhere between 0 and 255. And it will mix the colors just due to the nature of how your eye sees color. If you put you know, red and blue on there at the same time, you'll get kind of a purpley color on the output. Um, so you can actually tell what color you're going to get by opening Inkscape or any other um, software here. So here's Inkscape. And if you go into the color area where it said like the fill and stroke area, where we use this to turn on and off different colors for our um, laser cutting, if I used the fill and stroke and I have, uh, oh, here it is. So let me draw a rectangle just to get some values here. So my fill, if I turned it off, that's all right, but I'm going to turn it on right now. So here, if I wanted to make a completely red interior, I type 255, and that gives me red. I can't go any higher than that. If I tried to put um, like 500, it limits me to 255. So this is a value 255. So this is as if I'm turning my LED, my red LED on the RGB LED 100% on. What happens if I then take my green channel or my green LED and I turn it on to about 50%, which would be about 127? What color would I get? I should get this kind of an orange color. And this actually works the same way on your LEDs as it would in Inkscape. So whatever values that I want to put in for my red, green, blue, um, let's say I want to do about 200 for blue. That'll give me a pink color. So individually, each of these would go to a pin on the Arduino, maybe 9, 10, and 11, that I can control with an analog write output. And that will give me a mixture of some color here. And again, if I want to get rid of that red, maybe I want to make it a little dimmer in the red part of the spectrum, I can give it a smaller value. So maybe I'll give it 100 out of 255, and it makes it more of a blue color. And so you can mix colors and then have your RGB LED here kind of spitting out 
some mixture of the colors because in interior of this is three different LEDs so close together your eye blends the colors and so if you look at your um, let's go to the sick guide here if you look at your uh, let's do the soft potentiometer for example uh, you're going to use your RGB LED and you're going to plug it into the board. You have one ground wire and each of the R, G, and B here get connected up and, and in fact they did use uh, 9, 10, and 11 um, for the pin inputs. And notice that the pin here, it's got a squiggle in front of it and so only pins with a squiggle in front of them here can have an analog output and you can do an analog write function there. So you take your red from pin 9, go through a current limiting resistor into the red pin on the LED. You can find out which pin is which by looking in the SICK guide. It actually has a pin out showing you there are different lengths and uh, you can plug your, your LED in here and um, know which one is which by the length of those pins. And then here they're using a soft potentiometer. You can replace this with a regular potentiometer and when you do that you wouldn't need this extra resistor here so um, it would just be the same as the uh, regular potentiometer um, here and so you would plug this in for your input so you have uh, three pins on that one for ground the other complete other side is for five volts and then your center pin is going to be your wiper or your analog input. And then you're going to just write some very simple code and you can actually copy their code here um, for using a soft potentiometer. Um, so this gives you your pin numbers for red, green, and blue pins and your input pin number for your analog input. And you read your sensor value and then you're going to um, basically set your color here and so uh, if you just run this as is it should work pretty well um, they're mapping a little bit in here so this map function is pretty interesting because it will map any range to any other range so um, for instance if I had different analog input versus my analog output um, if I wanted to map an analog input would go from 0 to 1023 well if I can only go to 0 to 255 then that wouldn't really work out very well so I can use Arduino's map function map some value and uh, then I can tell it the ranges so from 0 to 1023 I want to map it to 0 to 255 so if I get 512 here, the output of this function that would be stored in a variable, maybe x, would be, um, if this is half of 1023, then I'll get half of 255. So it just does a basically a percentage here, and then puts the percentage uh, multiplied over here. And so we can say that this will be about 127. So this can be useful because you can take your potentiometer which is going to give you this map it to your 255 and that will give you some output there now don't just do this with a single analog input because you have three different uh, outputs here so maybe you have your um, potentiometer goes to your red. Um, your flex resistor goes to the blue. And the um, light sensor goes to the green. And then you can play with these and then see what values you can you can create 
and get different colors to display on the LED. So that's a pretty simple um, uh, experiment here. And so you can also, if you want to pick a particular color you want to try to see if your LED can produce, um, you can pick uh, something here and try to produce it. Now I will say the only issue with this is that if I give 0, 0, 0 in Inkscape, it gives me black. However, my LED can't give me black light. There's no such thing. So uh, what black means here is actually transparent for our LED. So if it were at nighttime, there's no other ambient light in the room, this is the color that would get produced. So I can mix these different colors here to see what the color is going to get. And so if I did 0, 0, 0 and it's a completely black room, then I can't tell if my LED is on or not. So if I give it a dim blue color, uh, it's going to get kind of like this range here. You're not going to get a dark blue like that. You're going to get a dim blue. And so you can kind of mix these values to see approximately what you might get um, from a LED. So there you go.